All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Devin Smitkamp. And I am John Rio Serpuche, and we are the founders of Clue. Clue is a first of its kind smartphone scavenger hunting application. Uh, it combines real world locations with a digital and immersive, uh, immersive and engaging digital experience directly in the palm of your hand. Before we go ahead and dive into what exactly Clue is, we want to go ahead and tell our story and give a little bit of background about how we came to be. I was born in McCown, Texas. I was born and raised. I went to Max High, graduated in 2011. Um, I am extremely entrepreneurial minded because of my parents. My father is a very uh, successful nightclub owner. He taught me all the do's and don'ts behind business. Pretty much taught me to be the devil's advocate, I guess. He um, pretty much he showed me how to visualize all the outcomes of everything I do before I do it. My mom, on the other hand, she taught me to be a go-getter and that any dream can be accomplished. I was actually born and raised in the suburbs of St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, my entrepreneurial endeavors started at a very young age. I was really creative, just had a ton of ideas as a kid, and so I figured uh, the best way for me to relay those ideas to potential consumers would be to start teaching myself graphic design. So at the age of 14, I began my journey uh, as a self-taught graphic designer. At 15 then, I started uh, designing, printing, and selling t-shirts uh, out of a backpack, school hallways, county fairs, etc., just anywhere that I could. Uh, from that point on, I kind of knew that uh, this was kind of my calling and I'd like to start a business in the future. As luck would have it, we both moved to San Francisco at the same time and we both met at the Academy of Art University, where I was a game designer originally. And I was actually a fashion merchandising major. Um, it was really cool because John and I lived about a block apart from each other and just instantly kind of became a part of the same friend group. Uh, the best part about our friend group is that we were all really like had the same mindset. We all were obviously pursuing a major in college, but uh, we had bigger aspirations. We wanted to build and create something much larger. Uh, John and I were immediately connected to each other because we both have a certain uh, leadership quality. Uh, so we got together right away and we started our first entity, which was the 14 Karat Clothing Company. Uh, the premise was really simple. What we wanted to do was provide premium quality cut and sew uh, streetwear garments to an urban market that was currently really oversaturated with screen printed blank t-shirt brands. Uh, so we started with that and we like to... Um, well, sadly, we did not have the financial backing to keep our project going, so I took my next opportunity and I went to Austin, Texas, where my old roommate from San Francisco had a lot of connections in the promotions and uh, <laughs> pretty much the promotions world over out there. Um, so that's pretty much where I built my network. Around the same time, I traveled around Los Angeles, California, uh, that area for a little while. Uh, things got a little bit tough, so I decided to move on back home to Minnesota. This time to the other Twin City, to Minneapolis, where I lived downtown and actually uh, managed a food truck out there for uh, all of last year up until mid-summer. I then had a couple hardships, so I ended up moving back to the, uh, to the valley. Um, I came to regroup myself and pretty much I got a job at a bar as a bartender for a little bit and um, I wanted to save up money to eventually open up my own business. So it was, since being it's one of my first businesses, I needed a business partner so I ended up getting hold of Devin. Uh, you can imagine my surprise, about two years had passed since I'd really seen or talked to John. Um, he sent me a Facebook message saying that he had just moved back to his hometown of McAllen and obviously I had no idea where McAllen was at the time. Uh, I was like, okay, border down there, that sounds like fun, you know. He said he was really eager and itching to just kind of start up a new business, whatever it could be. He said he had a couple connections already lined up and in place down here. Uh, it took one night of hard thought. I slept on it and woke up in the morning and put in my two-week notice at work. And uh, two and a half weeks later, I was on a plane down here and I've been here ever since so that we could go ahead and uh, pursue the goals that we had set in place years before. So we moved down, I got him a job at the bar. Um, it wasn't our ideal job, it was just a day job. But, um, so we wanted to get out there really quickly. Um, but uh, we wanted to get out of there really quickly. So we ended up brainstorming about what, pos what possible business we could open down here that uh, would be successful. So we, we began surveying the McAllen market and we, uh, <laughs> and we decided uh, that our graphic design talents between the both of us could, uh, in a fresh West Coast mindset, could maybe be beneficial down here in the Valley. Um, so what we decided is that there were three um, main priorities that we needed to uh, accomplish in order to be a uh, financially viable uh, graphic design agency down here in the Valley. First and foremost, what we wanted to be is we wanted to be a 100% customer service oriented firm. Uh, on top of that, what we wanted to do is we wanted to beat out our competition with speedier turnaround times and also offer a higher quality product for uh, lower than industry standard pricing. Uh, referrals started coming in and things looked like they were really shaping up to be great. Three weeks into it, um, we had a bunch of referrals and we, the phone was pretty much off the hook, um, but uh, 
So we ended up quitting our day jobs. We ended up making uh, our design firm a full-time job, and that's where GPGI was born. GPGI Design Group. Uh, GPGI stands for Good People, Good Intentions. Uh, we actually came up with it out in San Francisco when we were living there. Uh, we like to think that it's uh, a good resemblance of who we are as individuals as well as who we are as, a, as an entity. We uh, believe that we are good at what we do and we like to put our clients first and foremost above all else. Uh, as luck would have it though, about a month or two later on down the road after we were kind of really getting into GPGI, another idea hit me, kind of like a ton of bricks. Uh, mobile scavenger hunting for the masses, created customized to any occasion for any amount of people. Um, that's kind of what started shaping what Clue would eventually become. But where was the idea sparked? Uh, it's actually my, uh, I'm pretty proud to say that uh, the idea itself actually comes from a long-standing family tradition of mine. Uh, every year on Easter, so as I said, I was a creative kid, so my parents would set up these uh, really fun location-based scavenger hunts to find my Easter basket around my house. Every morning when I wake up, there was a little clue that would lead me somewhere else in my house, and I would go around completing you know, challenges and objectives and little games to play along the way, eventually leading me to my basket in the very end where I would proceed to feast. Um, but uh, I couldn't help but think that, that same concept couldn't be applied to general gift giving of all types for any occasion. Um, so we started thinking about it and uh, we began working. Um, we began uh, formulating the idea into a complete business model and uh, we had no idea how potential or scalable it actually was. Um, from the uh, an anniversary, giving an anniversary gift in a different way in a one bedroom apartment, which I have done before. Um, all the way to uh, you know, uh, amazing race style hunt across the bustling city streets of New York. Uh, incredibly scalable. So we got really, really excited about it. Um, and uh, wow. Um, so we started uh, yeah, formulating that business plan. Eventually, we were uh, lucky enough to find a phenomenal investor who has helped our dreams come true. Um, but actually, before we. Uh, Clue actually isn't really necessarily what we're here talking about today. We're going to be talking about the millennial entrepreneurial experience, but just because we're on the topic right now, I'm going to go ahead and dive a little bit deeper into what it actually is. Um, so using Clue, which is actually going to be launching here in May, um, what you can do is you go on and create a custom scavenger hunting adventure, what we call a Clue Quest. Uh, what you do is you select the real world hiding locations. Uh, like I said, they can be in your house, they could be across your city, they could be across the country. Uh, you select the navigating clue content that leads between them, you add personalized photo, video to really personalize the experience, and then you also select the objectives, challenges to be completed at each location along the quest. Uh, we use QR code scanning technology, I'm sure you're all very familiar with it, um, in order to uh, track location and measure progress along these quests. Uh, so the idea is that you have to scan a designated QR code with the app to be able to log into your specific quest that's been created for you and then you actually have to scan each location in order in order to progress along the hunt. So what it does is it effectively creates a location-based race to the finish uh, for either one person, small groups, or massive crowds. Our days are short. We are uh, working in our office day in and day out just so we can keep on track. Um, but it's not an easy task, but since we can do it, we believe that any other, um, any other like-minded like -minded millennial can do it as well. So what we have set out to do is we want to strive to uh, empower and inspire the millennial generation to build and create new business. Um, so we've kind of set forth an effort to do that in our new blog. Uh, it's cluequest.com slash blog. We'll have a link up to that shortly. Um, and what we actually uh, have is a blog post that we put up about a week or two ago entitled uh, Mentality Shapes Reality. And uh, what that does is it... Um, it outlines six key ideas, uh, thought processes, uh, and core beliefs that we believe young entrepreneurs must possess in order to really thrive in, in what it is that we do. Um, so the first of those would be uh, what we call 110% belief in self. Um, okay, great. So what that really means is uh, consumer purchases a product not only because of the aesthetics, which are obviously very important, but because they believe in a company's uh, mission, vision, uh, goal. Um, but how can somebody trust in your product or your service if you do not fully trust in yourself? Um, I believe that belief is contagious and if you fully believe in yourself that in turn others have been forced to believe in you as well. Number two, the ability to see the bigger picture. Devin originally came with me with this idea. It was uh, just a basic consumer product that uh, the idea was to give a gift in a new way. Um, so after a couple brainstorming sessions, we came to the conclusion that it was it was incredibly scalable to the point where we could do it 
on uh, the sh on um, events, festivals, fairs, a citywide tour, nonprofit events. It could be a corporate team building. You name it, and we can do it. Um, number three, uh, assess the risks and properly reap the rewards. So what that means is uh, I like to think that if you don't assess your risks and take proper risks, um, that you're putting yourself then at risk of missing out on a great opportunity. Uh, for example, our uh, investors placed a huge risk, uh, took a huge leap of faith in us as uh, two young 21-year-old budding entrepreneurs uh, with just an idea on paper. Um, what we did is we had full belief in ourselves and in our mission and our vision, and uh, we also provided them the bigger picture that we already saw. So they took a risk on us, and in return, we took a risk in also accepting the money uh, as young adults uh, in order to you know, put a big responsibility on ourselves to be the, you know, the head and the backbone of a budding company. And uh, it is a big risk, but we're definitely excited to see the rewards that are going to come to both parties uh, in the end. Roll with the punches. Um, this is a game of ups and downs. There's uh, always going to be obstacles on the road to success, but as a successful entrepreneur, entrepreneur, you have to have that one characteristic to overcome all those obstacles. Yeah, sure. Uh, we have a little quick story about that, actually. Like you said, we were just at South by Southwest um, doing our first big public promotion, and our idea was that we were, it was pretty simple. We were going to bring a free iPad, and we had a bunch of flyers that we were giving out that said, all you need to do, go to our website on your smartphone. Uh, go to our website and give me your email address to subscribe to our newsletter. So we wanted to get newsletter subscribers to just kind of build a little public interest. Uh, we were gonna pick a random winner at the end of the whole uh, South by Southwest experience to then win the iPad. As soon as we got out there, we realized the problem that we had not accounted for is that there is no cell service in the bubble that is downtown Austin during South by Southwest. So our first day, we collected 40 subscribers that were actually able to fully go through with the process. Um, and it just was, we weren't gonna hit quota, things just, it wasn't working as fast as we needed it to work. So we sat down that night and we, we reassessed the situation and we decided, well, what else can we do? So we went back to the drawing board and we actually went back to basics. So what we did is we went out early in the morning to Walmart and we grabbed uh, a couple uh, clipboards, pieces of paper, and we hit the streets twice as hard the next two days, uh, just pen and paper, writing down names and, uh, and email addresses. And we actually came out after, after our three-day experience with over a 1,000 email addresses. So if we had stopped and uh, just kind of let that failure kind of just go. We maybe would have ended up with you know, a couple hundred, maybe tops, but we decided to overcome that and, uh, and, and roll with it in a different way. And because of that, it was a lot more successful. Number five, this one's pretty, uh, pretty important, especially for people that are you know, our age, the ripe age of 21. Uh, we call this the party can wait. Uh, it's, it's literal and it's a metaphorical in a sense, really. Um, it's not always gonna be a crazy raging party that's distracting you from the goals that you have in place. Um, but just hanging out with your friends sometimes and just the simple temptations of life. Uh, the idea is that you need to set your priorities. If you set a goal, you follow your priorities every single day and uh, you don't do anything else until those are accomplished. And that's kind of how we live our life. The last one is a thirst to know more. There is always an opportunity for your company to expand um, as well as yourself and knowledge. Um, there's always something more to learn. The idea is to go ahead and expand your network, either online or offline, whichever way you do it. There's introverts, there's extroverts. Um, if you're extroverted, go out and meet people. Ask why they do what they do, how they do it, why, when they do it, you know, et cetera. Just ask as many questions as you can. Introverts, obviously, the internet, the library. I'm sure you've got a great one here. Um, just, just always thirst to know more. Um, you're never done learning is kind of the idea behind that. It's a really basic principle. Um, so anyways, with these six things, we tend to believe that uh, these are some really basic core mindsets uh, that obviously combined with drive and dedication and then overall passion for whatever project it is you're working on, like the passion that John and I have for our endeavors, uh, will put you on the right step to being a, a successful millennial entrepreneur. So if uh, anyone else has the thirst to know more, we'd like to open the floor up to questions. Um, as you can see, here's our social media. You can go ahead and... Uh, Follow us if you're on your smartphones. Take a look. We love to engage with all of our, all of our fans. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, the whole the whole investment kind of came uh, almost accidentally. We weren't really looking for one. It just kind of accidentally popped up as a as an opportunity, um, and it all happened really really fast. 
And so we kind of weren't 100%, you know, we knew what we wanted to do. We knew how we wanted to do it. But like I said, it was just an idea on paper. And so for us to accept an investment and to put this responsibility over our heads at such a young age um, with an idea on paper that we were still working and formulating um, was a little bit stressful, you know, and we're obviously really happy that we took that risk. Sure, no, absolutely, go ahead. That's, that's, that's also why we're here, of course. Of course, absolutely, yes. Um, this is more, uh, let's say, I'm, let me explain our, one of the events we're going to have in Austin. So it's going to be a pub crawl scavenger hunt throughout 6th Street, right? So we're going to have a, our beginning destination, which is going to be our first bar. And uh, we're going to go there. There's going to be a bunch of flyers. We're going to talk for a little bit. And then we're going to begin our, uh, the, our, our quest throughout 6th Street. So um, we're going to give you our, our first clue, I guess, and it's going to be what is, uh, where are the awards held on 6th Street? And then you're gonna go to Trophy Room, right? So you go to Trophy Room, it's gonna be packed, it's gonna be on a Friday or Saturday night, you're gonna go in there and it's gonna be completely packed, so you're gonna have to look for the clue girl, who's gonna be holding a, a platter of, I guess, maybe some, uh, some sponsored alcohol. Um, be a lot of sponsorships involved. A lot of sponsorships involved. And so you're gonna have to find her on the back of her t-shirt is going to be a QR code, just like this, that you're gonna have to scan, which is gonna give you the, the next following key to the next destination. It's, more it's incredibly involved. Absolutely. It's, it's location to location to location, eventually leading to an end location. So in... Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, like I said, how it started was, uh, it started as a completely just uh, a consumer grade product where I wanted you to be able to create the same kind of experience that I had as a kid and then used in my early adulthood as well uh, for other purposes, um, for any occasion that you wanted it for. So of course, anniversaries, uh, we look forward to seeing our customers do proposals, um, things like that of that nature, birthdays, different party events, the idea to you know uh, enhance a uh, family get together, a family reunion, um, we're currently talking with uh, a friend of mine who's in the military and he's trying to get us involved in some deployment activity stuff for families to make, you know, uh, deployment a little bit easier. So we want to just be anywhere and everywhere that we can. The idea, like we said, is pretty scalable to the point where you can do it in a one bedroom apartment, you can do it across an entire city, um, and it's all customizable down to, you know, every step of the way. So you create it with the app, we send you a packet of materials to administer everything, and then, uh, and then you go from there. And one day incorporate those glasses. And that is actually is, is part of our plan. We want to do a little augmented reality with glass as well down the road. Yes, sir. That is correct, yes. Everything that we're doing right now is absolutely local. Yes, our investors are local. Our phenomenal uh, engineering team is all local as well. Um, and so we all kind of work hand in hand here. And then we plan for our, uh, you know, our to go out to Austin and you know, to do our little promotions and stuff like that. Um, like I said, the South by Southwest promotion is actually our first promotion we've ever done, like our first public promotion. So we plan on definitely doing more traveling, going uh, we'd love to go to the X Games in Austin uh, coming up this June. Coachella, so on and so forth. Any, any, any yeah. event.
but the application is really, really very stable. I just learned outside of the table. It's broad. <laughs> so it's very broad. Yeah, All possibilities are endless. So it's pretty cool. Yes, sir. All right. Um, well, we've, uh, we've been working a little bit with our pricing structure, kind of switching it around a little bit here and there. Originally, uh, we planned on having our consumers pay for the product. We were going to send out a packet of materials. Really, the QR code, uh, our initial launching idea is that the QR codes were coming on, on small concealable stickers. So you stick those in your locations and scan them in the proper order. It's very nice and easy. Um, we're kind of now gravitating towards uh, maybe offering a free product as well, a uh, printable PDF version possible we're still in talks about working out with that but majority of our money is going to come from sponsorships so when we do public events uh, let's say for example we go to a music festival we can go in there and uh, say hey Coachella uh, whatever the case may be we want to come and create this quest you know for your already you know you're already coming you know, uh, what I, the word I'm trying to use members or attendees there we go that's what I'm looking for attendees um, so the idea is that it would just create a different aspect to whatever event we're working with. Um, so what we would do is then go in and find vendors or find local businesses in whatever area we're, we're setting up this public event and say, hey, we can drive X amount of foot traffic to you based on the amount of people that are going to be doing this. Like, and they, everyone that goes has to engage in a certain way, whether it be purchase products or uh, share a check-in socially or a photo socially or ask you a question and answer a question within the app, something like that to encourage people to go and engage with local business and different vendors of different types depending on, on the public quest that we've created. Even just like Ruben said, um, we could definitely have a city call us and they don't have the time to make a scavenger hunt for the entire city, you know what I mean? So they would call us and they would have us go over there and we would set up the entire scavenger hunt for them. It would be a permanent scavenger hunt. This would actually stay there physically um, for any tourists who would go. Like for instance, in New York City, they want to see all the different sites and views. They would just go to our app and then uh, <laughs> see them scan on their way along. Yeah. Absolutely. Education is definitely something that we're going to be working towards as well. Given the education market, we've got a lot of different uh, segments of markets that we're going to be working towards uh, trying to get our foot in the door. So it's going to be a, a, a long battle, obviously. It's a lot of, lot of different places that we can go with it, but uh, definitely excited to see what happens there. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, absolutely. It'll be a free application. Any opportunities for like funding for other students or other people like Alex? Um, we'd right love an intern. Now, we'd love some interns. <laughs> That's always great. But uh, not exactly right now. We don't exactly need them just yet. But we will. Very soon. We need a lot of Unless we have any really creative writers in the audience. If you can rhyme. You if you can write. rhyme and write, a lot of our clues are little rhyming dealios that kind of really lead to specific it, locations. Kind of That's kind of what we do. Guys. We're pretty creative. But if you have any creative writers in the audience, we'd love to talk to you. So come on up and see us. Also, do you want to mention? Um, we have a bunch of t-shirts that we have from our South by Southwest promotion that we held on to just for little events and occasions like this. Um, if you are interested in the Clue app, uh, you can go ahead and go to that website and uh, sign up for our newsletter on there or come on up to us, talk to us. We can write down your email address just like we did at South by Southwest. In doing so, we'll go ahead and get you guys a free t-shirt as well uh, that we'll see you guys all wearing it around campus. So if you're interested, you can definitely stop on up after our presentation and uh, grab one of those for sure. We can put that out there. Yes, sir. <laughs> I've got one for you. Thank you. It's a good deal. Thank you, guys. We appreciate that. All right, thank good. You guys. Thank you, everybody.